here with Chris Foster. And you're with Harmonix? Uh, yeah, I'm with Harmonix. I'm the lead designer on the Beatles Rock Band. Okay, cool. Do you kind of tell us what the gestation of the, the game was and kind of how you decided? Well, obviously, it's the Beatles. But uh, kind of what, 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 what kind of really drew you to the pack and the project? Well, I mean, yeah, honestly, it's the Beatles and their music. I, a lot of uh, what Harmonix is about is giving people the feeling of joy that comes from making music or performing music. And there's very little music in the world that's as joyful as the Beatles. So it was such a perfect hit for us. We're going now. Can you talk about some of the new features in the game? Uh, sure. Uh, one of the big parts of the game is uh, three-part vocal harmony. So up to three people can grab microphones, they can all sing the same part karaoke style, or they can um, learn how to sing in perfect harmony. And you can also, if you want a real challenge, you can pick up an instrument and sing at the same time, which is just a mind-bending experience. Rico, now, how, will, how does it actually work in terms of hooking into 360? Is there a, a hub that everything hooks into? or? Well, if all your other instruments are wireless, you have three USB ports on a 360, so you can just plug in three microphones that way. Or you can get a hub if you want as well. Uh, I think some people that bought Rockman 1 have a hub and they can just use that. Okay. Um, did you guys learn anything as you're developing the game? Did you learn anything about the Beatles that you didn't know before? Oh, tons. I mean, a lot of it was we did lots of research to get into the details. I think a big part of it was also working through what had been said a lot, had sort of become common knowledge, but wasn't actually grounded in any fact. Or, you know, just like someone tells a story, someone else tells it. And just doing a lot of research and, and separating what was, you know, totally verifiable and true versus what was just sort of rumor and speculation. How much involvement did uh, Paul and Ringo have in development of the game? Well, Paul and Ringo, as well as Olivia and Yoko, were sort of creative partners throughout the project. So they approved things like song selection, the venues that we went into. They saw storyboards of, of dreamscapes, which are another big feature here. When you're in Abbey Road Studios during the years when they weren't touring, we take you into a recording session, and then that transforms into this sort of psychedelic vision of what each song is. And with those, they saw storyboards, and they approved them and gave us feedback on how we might interpret the songs so they're closer to the way they thought of them. Now, how do you determine which games are going to be in the game, which songs are going to be in the game, and which games are going to hold for DLC? Well, it's kind of like one of the uh, one of the better challenges to have is like choose only 45 great Beatles songs is uh, is a bit of a you know it's a good problem to have. So we we you know look for ones that fit particularly well in rock band generally you know bass, guitar, drums, and vocals, which is a lot of their music. But then we also wanted to honor sort of every every era of their career. Um, we also wanted to sort of really present each of them as a singer and songwriter. So covering that sort of range as well was a big thing. Very cool. So when, when will you guys have a, a timeline when the first DLC be available after the game's released? Um, we have we've announced what the first DLC is, and it's coming soon after the game, I believe. Uh, I've, I'm not sure if the timing's been totally announced, but we have our first album, which is Abbey Road, which will be released for DLC in its entirety. Uh, and then there's um, from Microsoft, there's an exclusive on Xbox Live, which is All You Need Is Love as a single. All of the proceeds from that go to Doctors Without Borders, which is a really great charity. Rico, can you talk about what you guys have done with the instruments? You know, that's obviously the come backwards compatible with all. The, you use your old ones with the new game. But what have you guys done to kind of get people out there to buy the new, the new instruments? Well, one thing we didn't do is we didn't try to cram in more features that became like a necessity for playing the game. It's the same hardware. It's got the same features as Rock Band 2. But what we wanted to do is create the iconic Beatles sort of you know instruments, the instruments everyone is familiar with them playing. So from the Ludwig you know, uh, drum set that Ringo played with like the uh, oyster, Black Oyster Pearl finish and the uh, Beatles kick scream in front to the uh, the Gretsch Duo Jet and the Rickenbacker 325 and the Hofner bass. These are just these iconic instruments. And we went, I think, the extra distance in terms of sort of just the, the polish. It's the latest refinement of the actual internals. And it's just like, just a really like beautifully presented version of each of these things. I just, I covet all three of them and I can't wait to get my, my own, my hands on my own. Very cool. Now, are you guys expecting a lot of new people to the game to come in? Are people who are have played previous iterations of Rock Band because they're going to see the Beatles and want to play the game. And what are you guys doing to kind of cater to that crowd? No, it's actually it's critical for us. Uh, we, we know that this is going to be a game, well, we're hoping it's a game where like parents and grandparents are shoving their kids out of the way to spend time on a console they've never touched before. Um, not that, and there are a lot of families that game together as well, but we know there'll be some new ones. So we want to make sure that there's, there's a real, the story has a real progression that'll reward you for going through it. We're going to talk about that like down the road. But um, we also made it so that all the songs are available for unlock from the get go. So you can just sort of immediately go in and start playing. Um, we made it so that with things like uh, vocal harmonies, it's very easy for people to just sing however they want to sing, and they're just rewarded for doing better. It's constructive, not destructive. Um, with uh, no fail mode, which is something we added in Rock Band 2, we made it much easier to get into on your way into the game. And we also made it so that easy difficulty has no fail on by default for you. So that so you can just, someone's trying to learn the game, you can give them easy difficulty, they get the simplest set of instruments, and they have their you know the simplest set of notes, and they have a very easy way to just try to learn what the game's about. Great cool. Finally, uh, wrapping up, what's uh, we have a release date. When, when are we going to be seeing this in stores? Uh, the Beatles Rock Band's coming out on 9909, September 9th, uh, for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Nintendo Wii. Great. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, my pleasure.